Hi there. So today I wanted to start working on the beach or vacation album. Um, I wanted to use this paper studio stack from, it's called Beach House, and um, I just bought the 8x8 eight eight inch because I always like 8x8 eight eight albums, but while I was shopping I found this for $3.23 at Hobby Lobby. Um, I got this nice book. Now I normally, I'll show you in a minute, I normally do my spines differently. This has the rings and it already has photo pockets so I thought wouldn't it be great to leave these photo pockets in the back and put your pages in front of it and this is a nice sturdy binder so that's how I'm going to do this one. I'll show you what I did before. This is the other beach album and I'll put a link below to if you want to look through it but um, I did this in blue I kind of framed it out in blue got a lot of blue in it um, so in the same stack there's a lot of this red color and I like it a lot it's kind of a distressed red and I decided I would like to use that too so that's what I'm going to be doing in this one so I went ahead already and cut out I, I want five pages front and back of five, so that makes ten if you want to look at it that way. I went ahead and pulled some of the papers, and these are going to be my, my main pages. And I want to do this in, I want to frame it out in black, so that means all my pages are going to be black, and then these other sheets will go on top of that. So, looking at this part, this is seven inches by eight inches, even though it says it's an eight by eight album, always measure. Um, so it's seven inches this way, and that's that's what we need. But this way, I, I know that I want to make a pocket at the end of every page so I can slide in a photo mat. So you need to cut it seven inches by nine inches. And that's so that we can fold and, and make the pocket on the end. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Where'd my paper go? I'm gonna show you with some white paper. And actually, I already did this because I'm having to redo the video. So you're gonna cut two of these, seven inches by nine inches. So what you're gonna use is just some good, sturdy um, cardstock. What I did was I went to Michael's and bought uh, the on sale, the black paper stack. And I also bought a, um, a stack of the neutrals because I know that I'm going to need some frames and other things on this decorative paper. So I got those two paper stacks plus the paper house beach house. And you're gonna cut this at seven by nine. You'll need two for each page. So you're gonna cut 10 sheets like this. Then you wanna score it at a half inch. So let's start there. And I'm just showing you with the white so that you can see what I'm doing because if I did it on the black, you couldn't really see it. So I'm gonna score in half and flip it over. And this is the long side we're scoring. And score it again. If you can't find your bone folder, which I can't most of the time, use some other tool. So there are my score lines. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the back sheet. If you're going from the PDF file, it's going to have links to all these materials. And if you're looking at the video on YouTube, you should be able to look down below and find links to what you need. Not the Michaels products, because you probably know how to go to Michaels and find those. Okay, so these are scored. And then what I'm going to do is... I'm going to attach them with the folded side in like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use my tape glider. I actually prefer this um, Sukwang score tape and that's what you should use but since I'm just demonstrating this I'm going to use my tape glider and then I'm going to simply put these two sides together, line them up. If you have to 
choose, like if you're, I see that one of these is not cut or not scored straight one. If you have to choose, get it straight out here because that's the side that's going to show. See, so put that on, rub it down really well, or use your phone folder, and then do the same thing on this other side. This one over and again get them as straight as you can on edge and there you have one page it's going to be a really nice sturdy page and you've got a pocket in it for your photo mat on the end and later on we're going to punch the holes so you don't need to worry about that right now except that when you cut these um, decorative sheets you're going to want to put them over Boy, that looks too long. Um, you're going to want to put them over near this edge. Be sure that you leave the half inch for the holes. Okay, sorry. I had I thought my husband was knocking on the door, but nobody was there. Um, the other thing you want to go ahead and cut out is some pockets. I just like to do all this prep work so that when I sit down to put it together, I can just assemble. Um, and what I have is I have this new Spellbinders pocket. And I did use this decorative layer and this one in the other book. Look here. See, this is the pocket. It's really pretty. But for the underneath layer, there's just this simple one. So I thought this time I'm just going to use that and not do the decorative edge. So this is called, um, let's celebrate. No, it's called Flourished Frame Pocket. Flourished Frame Pocket. So what I've done is I ran this through my die, my die machine, and um, with the black paper, because everything is gonna be base black. And then I cut a sheet of the decorative paper just to see if it worked. I cut it a little bit smaller and then I laid this down on it. Um, for example, I laid it on the back side, a little bit down from the edge, and I traced this line. And then I lifted it up and cut along that line and also just inside. I left myself um, a quarter inch on each side and at the bottom and roughly a quarter inch at the top. And then I glued that down. So I made four pockets. I, I want, um, I usually do one on every page, but I, I want to do a waterfall and some other things. So this is one of four. So if you want, if you're following along with me, go ahead and stop. And any kind of pocket you have will be fine. If you just want a plain old pocket or you don't have one and don't want to spend the money, let me tell you how big to make it. Um, this is two and three quarters inches down to here and you do need this flap. So two and three quarters by about six, six and three eighths. So cut it about that big and then you're going to score the the uh, flap goes there. So the flap is just a quarter inch and a quarter inch down here as well. So score at a quarter inch at the two sides and on the bottom. And you know it's okay if you just have a straight edge. Let me show you something else that you can do though if you if you want a little bit of a decorative edge. I know that you can probably just go ahead and fussy cut it yourself. I can't because it would be crooked and by the time I finished it would be two inches tall. So what I do sometimes is I take, this is another Spellbinders die, this is um, labels four, and I take one of the labels and I'll just lay it, oh, where's a plain sheet of paper? Um, pretend this is a... Um, just a sheet of paper I'm making a pocket out of. I'll lay that at the top or maybe this side at the top, however I want it to look, and then I'll trace around that in the middle, and then go ahead and cut my pocket, and it has the little decorative thing.
thing up above. So, you know, you can be creative about it and not have to go out and buy every single tool. So there's your pocket. 